We said that rotational spectroscopy can be used to determine molecular quantities. In particular, it can be used to determine the bond length. Let's actually go through this example and show that that is indeed the case. Here we have the microwave spectrum of potassium iodide. And note that you have to give the isotope number because the reduced mass will depend upon what isotope you have. So we have potassium 39, I27 is a gas in the gas phase. The spectrum consists of a series of equally spaced lines separated by 3.634 gigahertz. Calculate the spectroscopic constant B in joule and the bond length in meter from this data. Okay, well the problem says that you have a series of equally spaced lines and we know from our study of rotational spectroscopy this is energy but in fact what uh, apparently the uh, experimentalist did was use gigahertz which of course is just proportional to energy up on this axis this would be the intensity so you have a series of equally spaced lines and the spacing between the lines given the problem is 3.634 gigahertz so this line here is also 3.634 gigahertz all right, so from this data, can we determine the spectroscopic constant? Uh, the answer is yes. The spectroscopic constant, recall, is B. 2B is equal to the spacing between the lines. And the spacing of the line here is 3.634 gigahertz. All right, the problem asks for uh, the spectroscopic constant in joule. So recall that E is equal to h nu, so we multiply this frequency by the Planck's constant. So b then is equal to 3.634 gigahertz times Planck's constant and first let's put everything in SI units, everything will come out here. This is 2 divided by 2 and the spectroscopic comes out to be 1.20 times 10 to the minus 24th joule. So in energy, that's what the spacing is between the lines, and they're equally spaced. And this was expressed in terms of gigahertz, but we changed that into energy by multiplying by Planck's constant. Now let's see if we can determine what the bond length is from this data. Recall that the spectroscopic constant B was defined as h bar squared over 2i. So therefore 2B will be equal to 2 h bar squared over 2i or just h bar squared over 2i. Or sorry, h bar squared over i and i is equal to mu r squared. So this is just equal to h bar squared over mu times r squared where r here is the bond length. So if we solve this equation for r, we have r then will be the square root of uh, h bar squared over 2b times mu raised to the one-half power. Let's look at um, the masses of potassium th uh, 39. We'll need that for the reduced mass and also the uh, mass of the iodine, the 127 iodine. What we'll do there is to go and look up in uh, the online periodic table. The one I like is web elements that seems to be around almost since the beginning of the World Wide Web and is well vetted and I think I can trust these numbers in here. Alright, so let's go to potassium and if we go down here we find um, an isotope link. So we'll click on the isotopes and we'll take a gander here. Here are the masses of all the different isotopes of potassium. For potassium-39, the mass is 38.96 gram per mole. And let's do the same thing for iodine. There's iodine. And the 
mass of the iodine-127 isotope, the only one listed here, is 126.90. All right, now we have the masses of the uh, isotopes, and now we can go ahead and calculate the reduced mass and then the bond length. All right, so let's put in these numbers. Uh, H-bar squared, 1.055 times 10 to the minus 34th squared divided by 2B. 2B was 3.634 times 10 to the 9th hertz and we're going to multiply that by Planck's constant 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th so this will give us the uh, 2b uh, the spacing between the lines in terms of uh, energy SI unit of energy joule and now we got to multiply by the uh, reduced mass the reduced mass we'll use these up here first we multiply the masses A one one twenty six point nine zero divided by the sum of the masses all right and then we have to be worried worry about units here this is in gram per mole but we're doing everything in SI units so we have to multiply by 10 to the minus 3 to convert the kilogram and this is per mole but this is the bond length on a molecular level and so we have to, and this is per mole, so we have to divide by Avogadro's number in order to convert this on a per atom basis. And this whole thing then is taken the square root. And if we plug all those numbers in, we get, uh, we ran out of space here, so we'll put it up here. This is equal to 3.05 times 10 to the minus 10th meter. So that's the bond length. That's the distance between the potassium and the iodine nuclei, this uh, 3.05 angstrom. There's 10 to my cent meter in an angstrom. Okay, so that's how one gets bond lengths from rotational spectroscopy.